covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. A significant enhancement in Microsoft Flight Simulator brings photorealistic UK castles and football stadiums to the game. I'll tell you all about it in a moment, but first, if you enjoy your weekly tech news with a slight Linux bias, become part of our fleet. Choose your rank at patreon.com slash category5. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to catch the stories we cover each week. I'd also appreciate it if you'd give this video a big thumbs up to show us that you like what we're doing. On with the story. Nearly half a century ago, in 1975, Bruce Artwick, an electrical engineering graduate student at the University of Illinois, submitted a thesis entitled, A Versatile Computer-Generated Dynamic Flight Display. Using a 6800 microprocessor with a whopping clock speed capped off at 2 megahertz, he pro presented a real-time flight simulation on the computer screen. Three years later, he founded his own software company, calling it Sublogic, and began developing graphic software. A year after that, for both the Apple II and Radio Shack's TRS-80, he used the model from his thesis to create the first FS1 flight simulator program. By 1981, it was reported to be Apple's best-selling title. At this time, Microsoft contacted Artwick and asked him to make a new and improved flight simulator that would be compatible with the IBM PC, and Microsoft Flight Simulator was released soon after. Advertisements at the time claimed, if flying your IBM PC got any more realistic, you'd need a license. This is almost laughable when we look at the graphics of the game today versus then, as Microsoft Flight Simulator has evolved by great leaps and bounds. In Flight Simulator 1.0, the player flew a Cessna 182 in Seattle, New York City, Los Angeles, or Chicago. The airport's starting position was in Chicago and a city with a city skyline view on the left and Lake Michigan on the right. In the Europe 1917 mode, the player flew a Sopwith Camel with mountains on two sides. They could fire at enemy aircraft as an act of war. Now it's 2021 and Microsoft Flight Simulator has received a big UK and Ireland update. Big to the tune of 48 gigabytes. The World Update 3 includes high resolution 3D imagery and features cities such as London, Birmingham, uh, Brist Bristol, Cambridge and Oxford. There are more than 70 custom landmarks and famous buildings that have been improved and enhanced with much detail added from palaces and destinations such as Stonehenge to bridges and even football stadiums. No, not that kind of football, this kind. Aside from that, the update also includes greater architecture details for all manors and houses, countryside churches and castles, and handcrafted airports have been added as well. In addition to the improved imagery, Microsoft is adding a new flight in the Northern Isles and landing challenges in the southeast of England and the Shetlands. The update is avail available for free to everyone who owns the current version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have not played Flight Simulator in like 20 years. Wow. I know. Yeah, me too. It's been around yeah. that long. And do you remember what it was like 20 years ago? Oh man, it was <laughs> brutal, but it was still shot. cutting edge at the time. It was cutting edge, and at the time, strangely enough, it, it, we're able to play it and be immersed in that environment at that time. Yes. Because the technology was not there to make it photorealistic as That's it is right. now. But So it, it's just unbelievable how the progression of technology changes our, um, our kind of our expectations of what a game looks like. So now if you play it here in 2021, it's just absolutely horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember that. I yes. remember playing it um, in the early days of Flight Sim on a keyboard. And, oh, and yeah. I remember playing it and exploring. Yes, because you could. You could. You it's like the first open open world kind of game. Yeah. In yeah, that you true. could just fly and fly and fly, and there was really nothing to look at. Yeah, it was just sky for and, the most part, and like like squares and rectangles and colors. But it was fun, and I I'll never forget like the the joy that that brought at the time. I got into the point of trying to like stunt pilot through mountains. 
So I'd always pick a, uh, an area yeah, where yeah. you had the mountains and I'd be like, how close can I get without actually <laughs> blowing up? <laughs> what is the hitbox like on this game from 1983? <laughs> That's, <right. laughs> That's amazing. But wow, yeah. the photorealistic oh, graphics, being able to fly over Stonehenge. Oh, yeah. And the castles in the UK, it's just mind-blowing. It really, really is. Uh, and I, I like that that feature has been added simply because it takes it to the next level. And yeah. it does make it more adventuristic. Adventuristic. Yes. Wow. I don't even know if that's a word. It, it was coined here, folks. You heard it here <laughs> first. I adore that the technology of being able to use satellite imagery has evolved to the point where they're able to use real photographs from orbit and mm -hmm. turn them into landscapes. And, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the old days of where they had to program in these yes. vector graphics. and. And it looked nothing like it does today. Right. I mean, obviously the technology wasn't there, but to think that a lot of the gameplay is in fact real, we talk about photorealism, but it, it's actually photo generated, mm -hmm. created by satellite imagery that's like super high resolution. We're talking 4K gameplay. Which is wild. And now they're adding these additional 3D elements. So it goes to show too that um, game development um, has a, a kind of a new process because mm -hmm. we've never, I, I know that over the past five, six years, we've, we've seen these kinds of evolutions of games, but looking back further, we never saw gameplay evolve so right. much so that when you buy a game in 2020, the very next year, you've got all these enhancements like what did Becca say? 43 gigabytes oh, of it's storage? Huge. It's massive. Um, and the, so basically you could have flown it three months ago and now fly it again today and it's completely totally evolved. Totally different. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Now, um, when they've placed all these elements in the game, um, maybe I missed it, but are they like geolocation specific to where they yeah. are so yeah. every one of the it's, castles it's like flying through reality wow in a, in a lot of ways that's and, cool you know you imagine if they continue to build this game using that concept that mm -hmm. development process and that up, update process in time it's just going to be absolutely superb like you're think about right now the fact that we can't travel we can't go places and and it's true fly you know if if you let's say you're a, an amateur pilot and you 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 like to just fly around and explore like I did in the game well now you know during the covid-19 pandemic you may not be able to do that like you used to be able to yeah so i know it's not the same thing i'm not saying hey this is a great replacement no but it's a it's a way to still be able to enjoy that process or that feeling uh, from the comfort of home and the safety Absolutely. of Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it was a couple of years ago, my wife and I, we flew to Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, we took a vacation. And the, the part that I loved about the trip, I mean, Hawaii was cool. But I love flying over the Grand Canyon. Oh, because even yeah. from, you're, like, you're looking out the window and you're seeing the Grand Canyon as a whole new perspective. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to take that element with, you know, flight simulator and add in things like, you know, oh, your wow. Stonehenge and all that kind of stuff. It just makes it that much cooler. Mm -hmm. it, it, it does add to the adventure of it. And I, I think it's, it's exciting. I'm, I don't even think my computer would handle it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try. We that's, are going to try. That's right. Mayday! How many of you have played the earliest versions of this game or even the pre-Microsoft ones? I remember having it on the family computer when I was just a kid. I can still picture the CGA graphics with the pixelated instrument panel and the very basic terrain below and hear the humming of the engines. Have you already added the UK and Ireland edition update to your copy of Flim's Flight Sim? Let us know about your experiences in the comments below. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks for watching.